Hello! Oh my gosh, okay. I am super, super nervous right now. Like, way more nervous than I normally am. I always have to work myself up to go live because it's a little scary. And I've done pretty well with it as time has gone on and... I, I don't get so worked up. Like, I can pretty much hit the go live button pretty quickly now. Um, but I'm really, really super nervous. I, I set a goal for myself. And I set this goal for myself, you guys, like two months ago or more than two months ago. And I haven't done it yet because it scares the crap out of me. And I finally came to the realization yesterday that if it is scaring me this much, I have to do it. I have to because the only way that you ever, ever get over your fear is by going through your fear, right? By hitting it head on. So I'm going to try to keep this really quick. I'm probably going to keep it really quick because I am that stinking nervous and some of you guys may think this is really silly, and it really kind of is, but I challenged myself to do 100 days of lives. So 100 consecutive days of lives. And when I thought about doing this a couple of months ago, I was going to do 30. And that was my goal, is I'm just going to do 30 days of lives. Because I'm doing it for two reasons. So anyways, I upped my goal. So now I'm doing like 30 scared the crap out of me. So I decided to do hundred. Like that makes a lot of sense, right? So I'm going to do a hundred days of consecutive lives. <sighs> like I am totally sweating right now. I am so nervous. Two reasons why I want to do it. My number one reason is because I am always, always looking for ways to bring value to my network. That is so important to me. And so if I could do 100 consecutive days of lives where I'm bringing some value, that's going to make me feel great. So that's my number one reason. My number two reason is because I have this humongous fear and I need to get over it and I need to grow. And the only way we grow is by going through our fear and doing it. So I have committed. And like I said, it's been like two months. So last night I got into my team chat. Hey, Kevin, thanks for joining. Kevin, he's always my trusty live watcher. I just appreciate you so much. So I got into my team chat last night and I was like, because I was going to start it last night. Like I've been doing this for two months or more than two months. And I was going to start it last night and I got in my team chat. I made some BS excuse of why I wasn't going to start it last night. And I got in my team chat and I was like, you guys, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And I didn't say like, you know, I need you to push me or what do you think about this? I just said, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And two other people jumped on and they're like, I want to do it too. But I, I'm going to do 30 days. And I was like, okay. So we kind of like came up with this plan where we are going to start it together. So um, Diane already did her live tonight. I'm so super proud of her. So you guys might think that it's, you know, silly. Like I've gone live before. I have posted a ton of videos. And you guys are probably like, why is she nervous? Okay, because I am committing to 100 days consecutive days of lives. Hey, Laura, thanks so much for joining. Okay, so it scares the crap out of me because am I going to have a hundred topics to talk about? Like, what if I run out of stuff to talk about? What if I get to day 10 and nobody watches my lives? What if nobody cares what I want to hear? Like, here's a glimpse into my brain and this is going to look familiar. I know it's going to look familiar. So for two months, I've been saying I'm going to do this. What if nobody cares what I have to say? What if I don't provide enough value? What if I'm not entertaining enough? What if nobody watches me? What if I can't think of enough topics to talk about? And this was when I was thinking of doing 30 days, you guys, and now I bumped it up to 100. And then <clears throat> here's what I would do to myself. Thank you for caring, Kevin. <sighs> 
here's what I would do to myself. I would say, mm, it's getting too late. The lighting's really bad. I'll wait till tomorrow. I'll start it tomorrow. <sighs> Walk by a mirror. Man, you look like crap today. I mean, you look terrible. You cannot go live looking like that. And there is no way I'm going to try to like redo my hair and redo my makeup. I, that's fine. I'll just start it tomorrow. And then, oh my gosh, I had this amazing topic that I want to share with my network. It really spoke to me. And then I think about it for a second and I go, mm, God, what if nobody like, what if people think I'm dumb? What if it doesn't matter to them? So for two months or a little bit more, you guys, this is what I've been doing to myself every day. Every day. Your hair looks like crap. Oh my God, you look so terrible to you. You cannot go live. You're not going to be able to come up with enough topics. Your network doesn't want to hear what you have to say. Like, I would never, ever, ever be friends with somebody that talked to me the way I talk to myself. It is completely absurd. And when you get inside of your own head, you are behind enemy lines, let me tell you. Because your brain, when you get a little bit nervous to do something that you have never done before, and that scares you, your brain is like, let's put the brakes on, let's get the seatbelt on, like we gotta hold up here, what is she thinking about doing? Oh, it's making her nervous, there must be something wrong, we gotta stop her from doing this. You are literally behind enemy lines. So, I'm so glad I reached out in our team chat last night and had a couple of other ladies that were like, no, I wanna do this too, so that kind of pushed me a little bit. But I want to tell you guys a little story. Um, so I, I learned a little bit about my own fears and projecting my fears onto my children, which is something that I never consciously do. <laughs> but I found out that I very unconsciously or subconsciously do this. So some of you guys may have seen the videos or seen my post. Okay, Viv is eight, Donna is six, and they have kind of been bugging us to learn to ride their bikes. And, you know, if you are a parent of little children, then you know it is a commitment. It is, like, it's a mental commitment. It's a time commitment. And so we've kind of been putting it off a little bit. But it's, it's really been important to them. And here's, here's one of the reasons why we've been putting it off. Viv is eight, like I said. She's known how to ride a bike since she was about five. But all she would do would be to circle in the driveway. Like her little safe place. Circle in the driveway. And then if she wanted to venture out anywhere, she would ask us to take the training wheels off. So it really got to become a pain of her wanting the training wheels back on, training wheels back off. So we just said forget it. The training wheels are staying on. When you are ready to ride without the training wheels everywhere, then we'll take them off. But we're not going to keep going back and forth. So we took the girls over to my mom's house because she has sidewalks in her subdivision and we don't. And I didn't want to try to teach them in the road. And Donna was all about it. Like Donna is my child that will try things and she has some fear but not a lot of fear. And so she was all about it. And, you know, her dad was right behind her holding the bike and she was trying and, you know, she wasn't getting it yet. But she was really trying. And Viv literally sat there on her bike, paralyzed with fear, paralyzed, eight years old, has learned three years ago how to ride without training wheels, sat there paralyzed with fear. So I tried everything. I tried the encouraging, you can do it, you can do it, I know you can. I tried the, okay, fine, you're just gonna sit there and let Donna go have all the fun and you're gonna be sorry later that you didn't have any fun. I lost my patience, there was crying, my husband lost his patience. I mean, it was a mess. And finally, 
she got it. And she took off and it was amazing and she was so proud. Like you could just see the pride on her face. And it was like just such a magical moment. And if you have ever taught kids how to ride a bike, you know what I'm talking about. So we get in the car and we're in the back seat and I turn around and Donna's crying. And I'm like, why are you crying? And she's like, because Viv knows how to ride her bike and I don't yet because she hadn't quite got it yet. And I was like, that's fine, Donna. You know, we're going to keep practicing. We'll go again tomorrow. Um, you're going to get it fast. I know you are because that's just how she is. And so Viv says to me, you know, I have seen four-year-olds, four-year-olds out riding their bikes without training wheels, Mom. And she's like, how can a four-year-old do that? And very quickly and very simply, I said to her, a three and a four-year-old, sometimes even a two-year-old, can learn to ride a bike much quicker than a child that gets to be five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think Grayson was like eight or nine before she learned to ride a bike because they don't have fear. They don't understand. They don't know how to be afraid of something. And you two are afraid you're going to fall. And guess what? You are going to fall. And you're going to brush yourself off and you're going to get back up. But that is why a four-year-old and a three-year-old can ride a bike so much quicker than older kids. And Donna says to me, well, if a three-year-old and a four-year-old can learn to ride their bike so much quicker because they don't have any fear, then mom, why didn't you teach us to ride our bikes when we were three or four years old? And I was like, oh, crap, I'm getting called out. And I was very honest with them. And I said, because I was afraid. You guys would have picked it up super quick. But me as your mother, I was afraid. I was afraid you would fall. So here I am telling them, stop being afraid. You're going to fall. You're going to get back up. Everybody falls off their bike. And the kid calls me out and I could do nothing but be honest. I didn't teach you to ride your bike when you were three or four years old because I was afraid you would fall. So whether I realize it or not, I am projecting my fears on my children. So, you know, the title of my life, Fear is Dumb. It is dumb. It's all this crap that we make up in our heads that hasn't even happened. We don't even know if it's going to happen, but we let it stop us. We let it stop us from doing things that we want to do. So my hundred lives challenge, 100 consecutive days. You guys, I am scared to death. I think I have five topics. That's all I have. And I'm like, what if I get busy? What if something happens that I can't go on? No, like you cannot do the what ifs. I just have to make it happen. I don't care if I have to get on here at 1159 at night because something went crazy for the day. Like I am committing this to myself because the only way I get through my fear is to go through it. Or, or the only way I get over my fear is to go through it. So that's what I have for you today. If you know anybody that suffers from fear, thank you, Diane. I know I can do it. I kind of. <laughs> With your encouragement, I love it. If you know anybody that suffers from fear, like it is almost always completely irrational. Get out of your own head. It is a terrible place to be most of the time. Um, this is a public video. Share it. Share it with somebody who needs to hear it. Hey, Kenya, thanks for joining. So, 100 Days of Lives Challenge. Days of Lives, that's like a soap opera. We'll try not to make it a soap opera. So, I will see you guys tomorrow.
with a new topic. So thanks so much for joining. I hope you have a fabulous, fabulous Tuesday. And stop letting fear get in your way. See ya.